My name is Tony and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm the owner of Oceans Programming and Design. It's a freelance for hire CAD design and CNC programming business for the injection mold industry. Started this channel because I wanted to do some Simitron tutorials on the complete process of an injection mold design. I'm going to be starting with uh, customer supplied data and taking it all the way to the completed mold design. I'm going to start out with an overview of my plan using this little PowerPoint that I made, highlighting some bullet points in the mold design process. I'll be preparing the part for molding. I'll be checking for any undercuts, addressing any draft issues, whether it be for molding or shutoff purposes. And I'll be making any changes that I think need to be approved by the customer. Maybe they're substantial enough. Sometimes they're not. Let it slide, but sometimes uh, you need to get that customer's okay on it. I'm going to be going over how to create a layout part utilizing the setup table. Um, it's going to be a four parts per block, so we're going to do a four part layout UCS. All the UCSs will be individually controlled the X and Y, the rotation and Z level. Most of it's all taken care of there in the setup table. I'm going to be going over the quick split function. Uh, we'll be adding that part onto the layout UCSs that we just created. We'll be splitting the surfaces for shutoffs if need be, designating pull directions, and we'll be going over some parting line surfacing as well. I'm going to be starting out with an off-the-shelf PCS base straight out of the Simitron catalog. I'll be adding catalog parts, eye bolts, safety strap, springs, and I'm going to throw a thin switch in there. Uh, components that you would want in all your design projects. I'm going to be downloading a file from the PCS website and making a catalog part out of it. We'll be adding screws. I'll be going over how to transfer attributes from the cut object. I like to have all the threaded holes in my mold design. I like to have them all the same color. And I'll show you how to make sure that happens. And I'll be showing you how to save your parts so they appear correctly in the BOM at the end of the design. I'll show you how to create customizable cavity blocks utilizing the setup table and then add, adding them to the mold design using the add duplicate function. I'll be showing you the add ejector function and the add cooling item with channel. I'll be throwing some baffles in there with a the channel. I'll, we'll be going over the assembly copy function and also the assembly rotate function. And then I'll be doing a simple motion analysis, checking to see if there's any collisions with the ejector clearance pockets. Just a nice little verification tool that Simitron has. Finally, I'll be pulling a trode using one of the electrode templates and exporting it into NC. I'll go over how my templates are set up, maybe showing you some cool tips and tricks to make your programming a little easier and faster. Also have some pretty cool customized burn sheets and end sheets that I'll be going over as well. Well, that about does it for my overview here. Uh, hopefully I'll be going over something that interests you and uh, you'll stick around to watch more. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the part modifications. As you can see, the customer's data came in and must be automotive position. UCS is way off in the middle of nowhere. And the part will be skewed as well. I am familiar somewhat with this part. I've designed this mold before. So I know there's some issues that we need to take care of. Um, the first thing I want to do is create a UCS so the part's not skewed. 
So I'm going to create UCS by geometry. I will pick the intersection of there for my origin. I will pick that point there for my X. And I will pick there for my Y, because I know that's a flat plane. Okay, so now my part's not skewed. Some straight walls. Looks good. Now I'm going to place the UCS. And I'm going to go in the center of this arc right here. So go UCS by direction. And there are no those aren't arc those are not arcs. So I'm going to have to come over here to modify fair solid. Now I should have an arc. So UCS by direction. I'm going to pick the center of that arc. And voila. Turn off this UCS and I will save that. I know there's some issues with this part that uh, I need to have the customer's approval on, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And that is going to be in these areas right here. These are straight walls and below parting line here, I'm going to need to get a little bit of taper. Modify the part a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Create a swept surface. I'm going to create some main planes. I'm going to do a split silhouette on that radius right there. Looking in the Z direction. Offset to point. I'm going to split the faces. I got two areas here. It'll be split right where my silhouette is at. Now I'm going to create a swept surface in the Z direction. And I'm going to put a little bit of an angle on it. Three degrees. Z direction. And there, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Flip the three degrees.
And I'm going to do a replace face. There, and there. Place that face, that face. Now I have a three degree wall going back straight at the point to which that silhouette, that radius was broken at the silhouette. It's the only part modifications I need to be need to make, but I feel like the customer needs to approve. So at this point, I would stop right here and uh, send this part off to the customer and um, make sure that they're okay with it. The part now is pretty much ready for the quick split, but I do like to do one thing. I like to add shrink to my part. Um, I know you can do it when you're setting up your parting assembly, but for I just like to do it my, myself. I, I prefer it that way, and then I save it as a shrink part. So I solid scale. That is the pivot point. This part has 21 thousandths shrink. And then I will save that. Is housing 021 shrink. I don't know why, I just like to do it myself and for verification purposes, I guess. I don't the other way is perfectly fine. It's just me. So next thing we're gonna want to do is create a layout part. So I just got a, I just started a new part, nothing special. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a point on the main UCS right here. So I will do that, create a point. And then I want to move it linear. I'm going to go, say, negative 3 in the X. Negative 3 in the X. And 2 in the Y. All right. I will create a sketch on the XY plane and use that point as a reference. And I'll create four points. And I don't want them to be constrained together. Throw some dimensions on there. Let's go two inches. I'm going to keep them the same numbers. I just don't want them to be constrained to each other because I want to have individual control.
Now I can create the layout UCS. <clears throat> this is right down here. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go in and rename layout one. Layout two. Layout three. I like to put underscores in front of the name just so they stand out a little bit. Okay, there's how you create the UCSs. You don't need to save it as anything special. You can just save it as layout part. I'm going to go down here to mold design folder layout for parts okay so now we're going to jump into the setup table now, obviously there's nothing there it's a brand new file so i've got to create a new group i'm just going to call it layout and a new item i'm going to call it Block X, block Y, we'll do layout one X, layout one Y, layout one rotation. Let me start with that right there. Now I want to put some numbers in here. So it uh, numbers that are different than what my actual sketch is. So I want to put in minus three, four, one, and one. And the rotation we'll get into shortly. So accept that. Now if you go up here to your feature guide, you double click on your linear move. Actually we're gonna do the, uh, we'll do the layout UCS first. So now you can see, double click on the sketcher in your feature tree and you can see your dimensions pop up. Click on the dimension from setup table, layout 1x. Layout 1y. Now I'm going to From setup table, block X, from setup table, block Y. Update, there you go. So now I have control. Say I want my block negative four inches, zero on the Y. There we go. I want my UCS. I want it to be two inches by two inches from the center of the block. 
Here we go. Now I'm gonna go back in and do the same thing for the other layout UCSs. <clears throat> Layout 2x, layout 2y, layout 2 rotation. Like I said, I'll get to the rotation part. I, you can't do that at this point. I'll, have to show, I'll show you how. Layout 3x, layout 3y. Layout 3, Rotation. Layout 4, X. Layout 4, Y. Layout 4, Rotation. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back in and attach these numbers from Setup Table. Layout 2, X. I want them numbers to be, I need to go back in and change these numbers. I, one, one. I said I'll get into the rotation soon. From setup table, layout to X. Setup table, layout to Y. Layout three X. Layout three Y. Layout four X. Layout 4Y. So now I can go back into the setup table. I have really full control over the positioning of the UCSs. Go one inch on the, is it right where I want it? And then I can also, next I'll create a UCS. I'm going to call this center of block. And you don't have to have that UCS in there, but it's a nice little reference. And I will save that. Now, as far as rotation goes, I'm going to move radial layout one ninety layout two ninety layout three 90. Layout 490. Now this here, I'm going to go into layout one rotation from the setup table. Puts it back at zero. Setup table, layout two rotation, zero. Layout three rotation. Layout 
about four rotation. So now you have control. Say I want to uh, rotate layout three and layout four, 180 degrees. 180, 180, there you go. Now they're rotated 180 degrees. And I have full control over where I want these UCSs to be. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some planes for my parting line surfaces. Um, sometimes you're creating parting line surfaces. It's nice to have a reference plane for sweeping a surface to or trimming a surface to. I guess I have it set up in my uh, layout part and we'll go ahead and do that. So I want to put in a few more items here. I'm going to put in a parting line surface X positive parting line surface X negative parting line surface Y positive Parting line surface Y negative. And I'm going to put some numbers in here while I'm thinking about it. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to create main planes on the center of my block. And now I'm going to do plane parallels. positive, x negative, y positive, y negative. So I'm going to go in here, my x positive, and attach it. Attach this to my X negative. Attach that to my Y positive. Attach that to the Y negative. Now I have, when I'm creating my parting line surfaces, I kind of like sometimes to have a plane there to uh, use. And I, I can go in there and change any of that. So say you want these to be six inches. And you'll see how I utilize them when I start doing my parting line split and parting line surfaces. You'll notice that I used abbreviations for my new items over here just to both well, save some time. But you can, like say layout 1x, you can type out layout 1x, it's perfectly fine up here, but you can also Type it down here in the description. And that is to help keep the formulas short.
shorter. I will show you an example of that. Um, so let's say a party line surface Y positive. Right now it's just a value because I just pulled it in from the plane parallel. I can change that to a formula. Okay, so what I want my parting line surface Y positive. Let's say I want it to be layout one Y. And then I can just plus four inches. So it will, the new number will be the Y dimension to layout one plus four inches. Uh, if you notice, my uh, parting line surface jumped out there. And that helps having the short names helps keep the formula short up here. It, uh, these setup tables can get really in depth to where you're using a lot of information and that formula can get really long so if this is a pretty simple setup table so i'm not worried about it in fact the one that i use i have this all actually i'll show it to you i have it all typed out i have my layout one x one y one rotation just something this little it's not that big of a deal but sometimes you get a lot of information and that can get pretty hard to read. Um, another thing that I guess I do is I will highlight everything, add folder, and edit this in setup table. save that that way it keeps your feature tree clear and uh, there's really not much that you need from there once you got it all set up in the table um, if you've noticed there's I don't have anything in here for the Z value on any of the UCS's that is done by editing the layout UCS. Now here you have your Z value, delta Z, X, Y, and Z rotation. Now you can rotate them globally, but I like to have it in the setup table so I can have it done on the fly. These are global numbers, so that will change all your UCSs at the same time. Or you can click on each. Say you have a, you know, this is fine. Global numbers are fine for if you have a four cavity tool. Um, but say you have a one plus one plus one plus one, where there are four different parts. It's really nice to be able to control all of your UCSs separately. And that's where you would adjust your uh, Z level. Now on the setup block, all of my layout X's and Y's, they're referenced from the center of the block. Um, like you can't, the way this is set up, you can't use a negative number. So say your layout 1X, I have it as one inch from the center of the block. Now let's go with layout. 2x 
that is positive and x from the center of the block. Say I wanted it negative x to the center of the block. It does not allow you to do that. And that is because you can't put in a negative number in the sketcher. Those numbers are all driven off of the sketcher numbers. If you wanted the ability to move your UCSs to a negative number, you would have to, kind of like I did up here with my move linear, that does allow a negative number. You can move something negative to you would have to create a point at the center of the block and then do another move linear with that point that you just created and use that for your setup table. That way that would allow you to use a negative number, but I've never, never really had an instance where I needed to do that. Um, so I just keep it this way. This, um, this can easily be changed. You know, this is for a four, four parts. Um, you can easily change it to two. Um, I guess it would take more work to make it eight, but it's easy to delete stuff. So say you only had a, a two part mold, you could uh, set up your layout one and your layout three to be center on the blocks and just not use layout two and four. But yeah, you can easily change this layout part to one cavity or four cavities. It's very, very simple to do just by, you can go in and delete things um, if you want, or you can leave it in there and you just don't use it. All right, well, I think I'm gonna wrap up part one of my mold design videos. Now in the next video, I will be prepping a mold base uh, for the project and that will have a thin switch in it. So we'll be going over how to create a catalog mechanism. Should be able to get to how to create the cavity blocks and go over how to uh, import them into the mold design. And maybe we'll get around to throwing them parts on the layout UCSs that we just created and uh, we can get to splitting that up. I'm just showing you the way that I do things. It's not necessarily the right way, but it works for me. Uh, if you see anything that I'm doing that I should be doing a different way or a better way, please let me know. I take criticism well and I'm always looking to get better. I uh, hope you guys learned something. Please comment below if there's anything that you'd like to see. So uh, please let me know if there's anything that you are not too sure about and I can maybe help you out with that. Um, at the time of this video, I have zero subscribers. Please like and share. You know what to do. And again, my name is Tony with Oceans Programming and Design. I'm a freelance mold designer and programmer. If you or your company have a mold project that you need help with, please feel free to reach out and uh, get a quote. Thank you for watching.